Good evening and welcome to tonight's Dazzle Unlimited. I'm Steve Steinberg and I'm pleased you're here with us tonight. I am recording this evening's show in Stockholm, Sweden. It's the middle of December 2010 and that relates to whom I have chosen as a very special guest on this evening's Dazzle Unlimited. He is Dr. Richard Heck and he this past week has just been awarded the 2010 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. He's an American chemist. He's noted for the discovery and development of what's called and has classically become known in chemistry as the Heck reaction. It uses the metal palladium to catalyze organic chemical reactions that couple aryl halides with alkenes. Go figure what that is. No. This is tremendous. This discovery by Dr. Heck and his colleagues, which they've all independently worked on different aspects of this kind of a thing, uh, using palladium and certain other things as catalysts in chemistry, has been monumental for the field of chemistry and all the products and developments that have come out of that that affect our everyday lives in medicine, electronics, just almost anything you might look or look at that's in your room or in a store and so forth. What it, it suffuses our society. Tremendous. So this is one of the key reasons that Dr. Heck, who is one of the, uh, um, this is one of the key reasons that Dr. Heck has been awarded this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry. And he is my special guest on tonight's Dazzle Unlimited. And so without further ado, let me introduce to you my very special guest, Dr. Richard Heck, 2010 Nobel Prize winner in chemistry. You're here in Stockholm. You've just received the Nobel Prize in the last couple of days. Uh, um, first, very simple question that probably everybody is asking you is not the scientific question, but the personal question. How does it feel to receive the Nobel Prize? Well, I'm very highly honored. It's a very important prize and uh, perhaps the most important prize in science, so I'm very pleased to receive it. Let's, let's go into exactly what the discovery was. Um, it took place, you, you, you came up with the initial discovery and development back in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about, in, in plain language that uh, our audience can understand, essentially what that discovery was. Well, uh, this is a reaction that's catalyzed by palladium, produces organic compounds which are more difficult to make by other roots. So it's an improved route to make many uh, basic uh, uh, chemicals and, and uh, drugs and things like that that are important in uh, the uh, uh, nature and science now. So it's a uh, basic uh, new way of putting together molecules so that they form more complex molecules that are of value in, in uh, various fields, but particularly in, in medicine and uh, uh, related areas. Palladium. Now, what, what is unique about the metal palladium? Why is it so special? Well, uh, every element in the periodic table is, is is different, so they're all special in one way or another. So I, I, this is not unique with palladium. They, they just uh, differ from one another because of their electronic structures. They do different chemistry. Well, well what you developed was uh, the use of palladium as a kind of a catalyst, sort of a... A, a reagent to use to make more complex molecules, yes. Uh, now, people might 
be thinking, well, there are so many chemical-based compounds on the market and in, and in use in just about everything that we see. What is so special about this development? Well, it's uh, hard to make some kinds of chemicals, and this happens to make some kinds that are difficult to get. So it's a, an improved way of getting uh, complex molecules that are of, of interest in the medical field, especially. Mm -hmm. um, um, now I understand that carbon is a key component of this reaction that you've you've developed mm -hmm. using palladium. Yes. So, uh, how does that work? Carbon. Uh, well, car the, let, let's go to the importance of carbon first. Why carbon? Well, all, all of uh, nature's uh, structures are composed of carbon. I mean, all your body parts and everything organic in uh, nature is composed of carbon compounds. So it's a very important element in, in, uh, in life, in living beings and so on. It's, and it's the, the critical component, isn't it? I mean, yes, without it, we wouldn't exist. No, not without carbon, no. So, so what is it about carbon and palladium as a catalyst for carbon reactions that is so special? Well, uh, you, you have complex reactions that you want to bring about. You want to convert carbon compounds into more complex molecules that are good for drugs and uh, various uh, natural products that you might want to make. And palladium is very good at doing this. Uh, and other elements are, are not effective, so it's a special case that palladium is unusually useful in doing some of these basic chemical reactions that are important in organic chemistry. Why was it such, why does this, um, well, some people might say, well, but there are catalysts of all kinds always being used in chemistry. Why does this particular use of this element as a catalyst merit a Nobel Prize? Where's the differentiation? Uh, well, I think the uh, difference is that this uh, reaction produces compounds of more interest in, in biological systems and medical type uh, uses, so it's uh, more value to the community as a drug producing material, uh, a reaction. Now, I, I read that uh, uh, some years back, uh, when uh, shortly after you first developed this this new method of joining carbon uh, atoms together mm -hmm. and, and using that as a basis for complex molecules mm -hmm. that uh, you put together a, a paper in which uh, I think it was 45, 45 or 47 pages of possible uses and since then it's become well, hundreds and hundreds or thousands, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't tried to count them. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, what I find fascinating from the, the chemistry point of view about what I've read about how this works is that basically what, what, you, what you came up with is a way of looking at, well, carbon atoms most, mostly are fairly stable. They don't react very much. Mm -hmm, that's right. And if you wanted to force two or more carbon atoms together in a certain structure, it generally could be very difficult because they would not necessarily join. Well, uh, yes, sometimes, but there's a, a lot of easy chemistry with carbon as well, but some of the more difficult ones are the more interesting ones, I suppose. And those and those are the ones where the palladium, was, uh, I, I view it as sort of a negotiator, like, come on, you guys, let's get together, shake hands. Mm -hmm. Normally they wouldn't shake hands, they yeah. shake hands, then they're friends. That's right, and yes, that's, that's a good, <laughs> good analogy. So. Uh, so, what are, can you give us an idea of what are some of the substances that perhaps the general viewership might recognize, or even as a category, that have come about as a result of this use of palladium to get carbon atoms or uh, you know, to join in certain compounds? What are some of the most outstanding applications that people might recognize? Uh, well, it can be used to make all sorts of complicated molecules. Any complex organic molecule can probably benefit from the use of palladium catalysts. So uh, it's uh, widely used and it's hard to pin down any particular one that's better than any other, but uh, it's very general, uh, generally useful to make all kinds of complex molecules. Do, 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 do
This is Steve Steinberg speaking. I hope that you're finding value in tonight's episode of Dazzle Unlimited. If you'd like to comment on tonight's topic, or if your company might wish to advertise on the Dazzle Unlimited television series, please let us know. You can email us at dazzle at dazzleunlimited.com. Remember, Dazzle Unlimited airs in southern Manhattan on Time Warner Cable TV Channel 35 every Wednesday evening in prime time at 8.30 p.m. Please make a note of it. And now, back to tonight's episode of Dazzle Unlimited. Welcome back to tonight's Dazzle Unlimited. Again, I'm Steve Steinberg, and let's rejoin my interview with Dr. Richard Heck, one of the 2010 Nobel Prize winners in the field of chemistry. You mentioned medicine as a key area. Can you, can, are, are we talking about antibiotics or palliatives or anti-cancer drugs? Well, it's not uh, any specific group. It's, this, it's this, the chemical structure that's important. And the uh, palladium does chemistry that makes certain structures that are useful in many different applications. So it's the chemistry that's important, making these different uh, type structures that you need for these drugs and other purposes. Well, for example, uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm reading here in a review of, of, of some of your work, of the several reactions developed by Dr. Heck, the greatest societal impact has been from the palladium catalyzed coupling of an alkyne with an aryl halide. Mm -hmm. This is the reaction that was used to couple fluorescent dyes to DNA bases, allowing the automation of DNA sequencing and the examination of the human genome. Can, can you address that a bit? Well, that's a, a rather simple reaction. It, it can be done other ways, but it, apparently it's uh, easier to do with the palladium catalyst, so they've uh, now shifted over to using that. But, uh, it, it, it was done before, but by a more complex route. So palladium simplifies the chemistry and makes it easier to do these particular reactions. And, and, and does that therefore have the additional uh, consequent effect of uh, speeding up progress in the field of GNA, uh, or I say DNA sequencing and the understanding of the human genome and so forth? Uh, perhaps. I. I, I not sure what the connections might be, but uh, any progress will certainly be a benefit to the general field. Th th um, this leads me to, to this <laughs> question, if I may ask. What, from my, pro my view of a philosophical perspective, can you talk about what drove you, what, what the, the motivation in you was to do all this research back then and as it developed later, what's the driving force that you have been feeling? Well, um, this was the very early days of palladium chemistry and I thought that was going to be a useful reagent. There were a few reports in the literature of people doing some chemistry with it and it, it looked to me like there was a lot more there to be done. And, that's why I got into palladium chemistry, and as it turns out, there was a lot more to be done, and it's turned out to be very useful for many different synthetic organic processes. But, but you had a basic curiosity, I, I gather. Yes, but there, there, was, there were clues in the literature. A few other people had uh, done things before, and you knew that it was capable of doing some interesting chemistry, but it hadn't been developed fully when I started. Did you go into that? Or, or I should say, did you choose that direction because you saw that there were developments that that could be made? Or was it, or and, was it perhaps that you just were, you had a fascination with the field? Well, I think I could say both. I, I, I was interested in what chemistry this would do, and in addition I was interested in what useful chemistry you could do, how you could use it to make things that were important. And then you spent all the all these uh, all these years that you've been doing the research. I mean, now, now you're retired. You're a professor emeritus at the mm -hmm. University of Delaware. Uh -huh. um, but in all the many years that you kept on developing and, and advancing this field, was it? And, and I'm thinking in terms of the the audience who might be saying, "Gee, well, I wonder what clues I could take from 
what Dr. Heck experienced in in developing my motivation, my excitement about pursuing a certain field. So that's why I'm asking you these particular questions. Uh -huh. and, and so I'm, I'm wondering, uh, on a, again, on a personal level, um, it wasn't that you just decided, well, this is an interesting thing, I'm going to show up at the office tomorrow and do a little more, and then I'm going to go home. And no, it certainly wasn't, no. Uh, well, you're doing research as part of your profession to do research, and uh, this uh, happened to look like an area of interest to me. I saw that there were some possibilities of doing some new and useful chemistry there, and that's why I pursued it. And it turns out there were some very good things to do there, easy chemistry to do that turned out to be quite useful in the field of organopladium chemistry and making useful compounds. So each time you came up with a, with a new advance, whether it was a small step or a large step, did, did, you, uh, did you have a... I mean, some people think in, or they feel in terms of feelings. Other people think in terms of the logic of something. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who maybe combine the two factors in, in how they approach a given subject and a given area of research. So uh, I'm... I'm Curious in just pursuing this a little bit more, the, the personal aspect uh, was your approach, as you felt it, mainly a um, well. This is logical. Let me take the next logical step, or oh look, I've I've just found that I can move this electron. I didn't know I could do that yesterday. This is a new thing. Boy, is this great! <laughs> well, uh, it, it looked like uh, an area where you could do some useful and interesting chemistry. When I first came across this, that there was some chemistry that appeared that uh, looked like it had very broad applications, and that's why I stuck with it and, and, and uh, examined it in more detail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In some of the, uh, uh, the literature, actually, from the Swedish uh, Academy of Science, which issued the Nobel Prize uh, to Dr. Heck, um, some of the headlines, removes a significant obstacle to progress. Palladium, a point of rendezvous for carbon atoms. Inspired by industrial progress. Eight, a magic number in organic chemistry. A new tool, a tool in the search for a new medicine. And so on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many areas involved. That's why maybe it's a little bit difficult for me to, to pinpoint a, a specific a question. Industrial progress. Can you address how this relates to that field? Uh, well, palladium is a, a useful element in, in uh, catalyzing many organic reactions, making things occur that wouldn't occur easily otherwise. So it's uh, found much use in, uh, in uh, making larger complex molecules. It's, it's a catalyst that does that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's an important use of it. And it's also a hydrogenation catalyst. It, it, it adds hydrogen to unsaturated molecules, which is a useful uh, synthetic reaction for organic chemists to use as making drugs and so on. And so when we talk about industrial progress, if, if you apply it to, to drugs, the, the pharmaceutical companies, et cetera, they use this technology. Yes, I'm quite sure they do. This is Steve Steinberg speaking. Dazzle Unlimited resumes in just a moment, so don't go away. In the meantime, if you have comments or suggestions for us, or if you'd like to advertise on the Dazzle Unlimited television series, contact us at dazzle at dazzleunlimited.com. The series airs every Wednesday evening in prime time at 8.30 p.m. on Time Warner Cable of New York City, southern half of Manhattan, Channel 35. And now, back to tonight's episode of Dazzle Unlimited. I'm, I want to go back to uh, the process that led you to be able to even do this research and to come up with these findings. Um, along the way, how, how, does, how does a person, even someone who's got tremendous ideas, get the capability, the wherewithal, whether it's money or support or university backing or laboratory backing, whatever it might be, to go and make these discoveries. So, so what, what was your experience? Was it all, um, a, I was going to say a bed of roses, let's say an elevator of roses. 
<laughs> well, these things don't come out of the blue usually. There, there were uh, early reports on the use of palladium as a reagent uh, way back uh, in the, in the 40s and 50s, I think, and especially in uh, England, there were some people working there. And uh, it was clear from what they were doing that there were some possibilities that palladium would be a very useful reagent in organic chemistry, and that's where I, I think I got my interest in it. So I followed it up, and uh, they apparently uh, retired or something, and they didn't do much more, but uh, it turns out that was a good idea, and uh, I got a lot of useful chemistry out of their initial work. Did, did you, uh, was it, but you needed a laboratory, you needed backing, you needed uh, perhaps a, um, moral support? Well, yes, I guess it, you, it all would help, yes, especially the backing. <laughs> Well, was it difficult to get that? What sort of process did well, one go the, through? Well, at the university, of course, I had a, a laboratory and uh, I, I was able to get research funds for what I wanted to do. So uh, that was uh, supported me, like the National Science Foundation of the U.S., for example, supported a lot of my research and the Petroleum Research Fund as well. So uh, there were the organizations that were looking for people to support who were doing useful chemistry. So you submit a proposal to them. And, if they like it, they support you for a while and uh, allow you to do what you want to do. Uh, so so in, in terms of that kind of submitting proposals, you had to, uh, I'm, I'm making an assumption here, you had to persuade them that not only was the, the research valid, but that it was going to lead to something, something important. Yeah, some useful uh, reactions or useful products, presumably. Uh, just useful chemistry is actually a goal because you don't know what it's going to be used for eventually, but you have to start somewhere and it, uh, it can begin from a very simple uh, reaction and, and grow as it's developed by other people. So you start off small scale and build up on it and it blossoms out and a lot of people start using it and it, and it becomes quite important when they uh, find out it really does something useful and I use it in a lot of different ways. Uh, early on when you were uh, doing this research, did you have the, the, uh, the thought that this probably, very probably, will be useful in many ways? Or was it the pure science or a combination, perhaps? Uh, yeah, I would say it's a combination. I started out just curiosity, what would this, what could you do with palladium chemistry? And I started doing a few things with it and it, uh, looked like it might be of value, and as I did more and more, it became clear it was of value and developed into some very useful chemistry. Um, and uh, so you, you uh, had the backing of your university, yes. the University of Delaware. Yes. And I think I read, correct me if I'm wrong, that you also worked at uh, an independent laboratory for a while and did some research there. Is yes, right? I, I was at a company for a while. Uh, and I did some of this work there too. And um, and and so we we can see the results here. Um, did you ever have a period or periods where you were just so frustrated? You said, "Well, I've been trying to do this and trying and trying to make this work, and I give up. I, I got to go. I have to go home. I, I can't take this anymore." <laughs> Uh, that uh, hasn't happened to me. I, uh, there's so many things that uh, you could do with this chemistry that I always had something else I could do. So I never ran out of ideas and things to try. Does this mean then that, you know, there are some people who, who think in a very narrow path, and there are others who think laterally and then maybe, uh, and if this doesn't work, I'll. I'll see if it works this way, and I'll still move mm -hmm. ahead. Oh, yes. Well, there's, there's some of that to it, too. You've got to uh, be flexible, and if it doesn't work this way, just come up with some other idea to make it work. So it's uh, trial and error, plus uh, you just got to try a lot of things, mainly, and uh, some of them will work and some won't. So d d would you say that you also had the view, and perhaps still have the view, that uh, really, really taking a step ahead of exactly what you're saying now, is if something doesn't work that you're trying, don't get discouraged, just 
try something different, keep going. Well, in, in my case, I, I didn't set out to achieve any goal. I, I just found the chemistry interesting, so I followed the chemistry and it led to useful things, but I didn't see that in advance. It came along with developing the chemistry. So it uh, wasn't something I planned ahead, but I just followed interest in chemistry and it turned out to be useful. Would you say that this is a, how would you categorize your own feeling about working in the field of chemistry? Well, I, I think it turned out very well. That the reactions now turned out to be a very important one. Many, many people use it and industry uses it, so it's been very successful. Not monetarily, I haven't made anything out of, any money out of it. Really? Yes. After all this? <laughs> That's right. I, I didn't uh, pursue patents and so on, and I just did what I like to do, the chemistry, and it's turned out to be very useful and gratified at getting somebody to use it and find out so, how useful it is. Oh, sure. Uh, but but uh, I gather from your description that basically it's an area of research that you just love. Yeah, so it turned out to be very interesting chemistry. It was totally new chemistry and uh, it uh, developed into some very uh, interesting and important new chemistry. Um, would you have any words of advice for our viewers, uh, which in New York and elsewhere, um, wherever people view our, our show, but um, people who want to take something away, they can say, this is something I really hadn't thought about before, but I can use this for myself. This is good. Uh, this is a good way to think about the world or my life or, or where to, well, what direction to take. That's where the philosophy comes in. Well, it, it, this isn't something you plan way ahead of time. You sort of go, go a little step at a time because you don't know where it's going to go. You, you uh, start off with a simple experiment and see what happens. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it works, maybe you carry it a little further. Or maybe you can make small changes and do different chemistry with it. So it, uh, it sort of grows on itself. And that's the way my research went. It, started simply in a few experiments, but then it grew and grew and grew into something quite important. Very exciting. Well, um, I, I think we're at the end of our interview, and I want to say thank you very much, and again, congratulations on your Nobel Prize. Thank you very much. And uh, I find what you have offered uh, very inspiring. Thank you. And uh, thank you for being with us again, my special guest, Dr. Richard Heck. 2010 Nobel Prize winner in the area of uh, chemistry. This is Steve Steinberg speaking, reporting from Stockholm, Sweden as I speak. See you next week on another episode of Dazzle Unlimited. Good night.